Welcome, everyone, and thank you all for choosing to share this evening together at Mitchell Giddings Fine Arts. We're excited to celebrate Donald Saf's exhibit with the artists. And for some of you, a reminder at this point to thank those who produce and tape these events may seem to be just a formality. But before I continue, I'd like to talk about BCTV and the Federal Communications Commission. So, as written in this week's Commons, the FCC has proposed new rules which basically would allow the deregulation of the cable industry, not what you all came expecting to be talking about. <laughs> in the simplest of terms, the suggested changes would enable the cable companies, which would be in our case Comcast or Southern Vermont Cable, to not provide funding and equipment to public access access stations like BCTV as they are currently required to do. It's important and it's scary for this could mean the end of local live broadcasting and the demise of BCTV, at least in its present form. And we very much hope Core Trowbridge and the BCTV are here to thank with each upload of our artist talks onto local channel eight and of course the MGFA website. So let's please try to understand the proposed changes and be active participants in the debate. And you can go onto the BCTV Facebook or website page and they've got it covered. So uh, that's my little political announcement. And not lost in all of this is our indebtedness to Andy Reitzman and Kate Purdy who film and edit all of the above and the Vermont Arts Council with whom we share a link and space on the Vermont Arts Council's calendar. And back to Donald Saff. <laughs> Donald has had a very busy year, and as you look, please note that these are all new paintings, most with reference to our town and landscape populated with Donald's unique stylized figures. In a way, his views become ours, where memory, imagination, and observation collide. By being here tonight, we're celebrating this sharing of community and this moment when we can enjoy art just for its own sake. Please help me welcome Donald Saff. Thank you, Jim, Petey. Um, I'm gonna start with a song. My, my son is uh, studying Russian, and he, uh, he's been translating poetry. And last Christmas, uh, he sent me, a, for a present, he sent me this, this, this uh, translation of a poem. And it goes, uh, I need little, a crust of bread, a cap full of milk, and these heavens, and these clouds. Little red boat 
feather, a shiny stone, a bird's feather. Matthew Sharp on the bass there. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna. Oop, I'm gonna try to keep this sort of short and entertaining, if I can. Um, it's, it's called. This show is called Outside and Inside, and um, I guess for the very basic. Reason because it's like pictures of outside Brattleboro, and then it's like the uh, it's, uh, the that feeling of when you're walking through the town and um, you have this inner dialogue going on, and and um, you'll be walking down the street and you'll see someone who feels more important to you, or you'll come to a corner where you have like this strong memory and like that there's like a ghost of that memory there. Or, um, you know, maybe you see someone that, that means less to you and they seem really tiny and you hardly notice them. <laughs> and, and also the idea of, um, in these paintings, I like to think of the idea of, like, when you're walking down the street, you have this, like, simultaneously, like, you're looking at people coming by and coming close to you. And then you also have this idea in your head about what it would look like if you were floating above. And so like you have this like looking down kind of feeling. And you always have that in your mind, you know? So I'm trying to like combine all those ideas into a, into a moment. Um, um, what do I want to say? I was, I, so this is a show of my new oil paintings and also some illustrations from a songbook that my brother-in-law put out, Dan Zanes. It's just coming out for a great Christmas present. And, uh, and 
Um, and I was going to have a stone, but I just didn't finish it. So, but I've been carving memorial stones, sort of like influenced by uh, local stones uh, from the 1700s. And um, I made a few of them this year, and I was going to make one for the show, and I just, just didn't finish it. Um, and also, I want to thank the T Taconic Foundation because I got a a big grant for this, for creating some of this work. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, um, so I, I do a bunch of things. I teach, I play music, and I make paintings and illustrations. Um, and for me, making music and making these paintings are really tied together. Um, and you know, you don't think about like, like, uh, like, Bob Marley doesn't have to come up and like talk about his work really before the show, you know, like to explain why his music is good. But, <laughs> but, I we've been talking about Bob Marley lately. But uh, I, when I was a kid, I listened to a lot of like pop music on this big blue plastic radio, and then. Um, the first concert I went to was this one that my brother uh, took me to. Um, not my older brother, David, who's here, but my younger, my middle brother. And it was, it was Bob Marley, and I didn't, I didn't know anything about him. I didn't know his politics. I didn't know any of his music. And I was like a young teenager, and that music just like, hit me so completely, like just from the first note. And it's just so overwhelming, so powerful. I just didn't, I had no idea that, that you know, from my blue plastic radio, I didn't know music could do that <laughs> on such a powerful, uh, in such a powerful way. Um, but I bring that up because, um, not to compare myself to Bob Marley, but to, I just, I want art to be able to do that. I want art to be able to, I mean visual art, to, I want you to be able to come into the room, even if you don't know anything about it, and just be like, and be hit by it. And not have to have like a big text about it, because I feel like it's its own language. It, it shouldn't need a translator really, it should just kind of, be, you should be able to experience it. And if I can't do that, then, then I kind of haven't succeeded. Um, so you can tell me if I succeeded or not. But, but like, like I, I do some teaching, and, uh, um, and uh, I have, one thing I do is a comic book class. And they, sometimes kids, you can't tell what it's about. And the only way you can tell if the kid is sitting there and saying that's, you know, like pointing out and telling you exactly what's happening. So the goal for my kids in my class is to get to the point where they don't have to be there explaining it, you know. It's just the artwork will, will be strong and speak for itself. And hopefully, just like when you're listening to music, it's like you're meeting, you're meeting with that artist on, on that two-dimensional plane, like your heart-to-heart -heart kind of thing. And, you know, that's what I'm striving for. Um, then I wanted to say, oh, teaching. I've been teaching a lot this year, and I teach little kids, and I teach teenagers. And the teenagers at the Putney School are just like, they're so amazing. They're, they're like so, they're like college level artists and, and um, they're really good draftsmen and you know it's, they're kind of better than I am in, in that department sometimes. And then there's these little kids and for them, the little, I teach at elementary school too, and for them um, it's, uh, for them it's no illusion. It's like, it's two dimensional. It's like, they are looking at a two-dimensional piece of paper 
and they're making lines and shapes and colors and they're fitting them together. And it's all really about like symbol. And um, they even have a hard time like thinking of something and being in front of something else. You know, it's just like things are stacked and you know. And, but my teenager kids are, they can draw really well and they have this narrative going. And for them, it's kind of hard to escape from the illusion of depth and everything in the picture. So I feel like both groups have something to learn from each other, like because the kids, that, the little kids can't have problem with that depth, but they can't, uh, but they, because of that, they're making these really cool compositions and really strong and powerful imagery and symbolic. And the older kids kind of get away from that, even though they're so talented. But so I try to like, try to like get them to see what's good about each other's art. And, I, and, I, and I'm also like borrowing a lot from them when I'm making my pictures and thinking about that. So um, since I feel like words, you know, this is its own language. I can't really say that much about it, but I can tell you a little bit about my process. And so my process is a little bit like, it's very influenced by music. Um, it's, I've been listening to a lot of jazz, and I think about like, like John Coltrane. Um, uh, you know, like he would go to a concert and play my favorite things for like, for the whole concert. <laughs> and, and it's, you know, like the melody, like da 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 like some really like simple, simple melody. So he'll, like in a lot of jazz music, they'll state the melody and then they'll kind of analyze it from different viewpoints and then they'll like destroy it and like it'll be like in tatters on the floor and then the melody will return again in the middle and they'll kind of put it together. It's sort of like, like that kind of ceramics where they shatter it and fuse it together with gold again. And then it will destroy again and then it will like come back and it will return to that basic theme. So I, I think of that concept a little bit when I'm making my pictures and what I'll do is just like do, start them with a ground, like an earth ground overall, that's like an organic kind of surface. And then, then I'll think about the composition. And for these paintings, I was really thinking about kind of an homage to Brattleboro or the small town. And I'll just come with a very basic kind of like almost folk, uh, composition and like this is this here is the view out my window from my studio and this is the view in my window <laughs> and I'll start with that very basic composition and put the fabric in place and just kind of very simple colors and then sometimes I'll just like kind of try to disrupt it and just like put a line all through the whole thing and just like fracture it and that, so once I have that narrative idea and the composition, then I try to think of it as an abstract painting. I try to like crack it open so it's just like shapes and forms and like a stained glass window almost, you know, and like, like, like the little kids, like that two dimensional feeling of little kids drawings of everything being on the surface, like try to push everything to the surface. And then once I do that, I might put like another transparent wash over the whole thing. And I'll try to return to the, to the theme, you know, try to get back to that narrative. And then I'll blow it apart again and, and like work on it and try to, try to think of it as an abstract painting. And, and then, you know, finally after like building it and taking it apart and building it, um, I get, to a point where I have to start, stop, and then usually that's because of a deadline, but, <laughs> but <laughs> um, hopefully it's because it's really finished, 
But um, so that's kind of my process. Um, and um, you know, really, I try to think about uh, one thing I talked about in the last talk a couple years ago was the third thing. So I'm always try to ask myself, what's the third thing? And that's what I tell my students too. So I think about like what's the third thing on every level? So what's the third thing like as far as colors? Like like a little uh, um, a uh, a trio of colors. What's the word I want? Um, what? A chord. A chord. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so the. So like I'll think about like little uh, triads. That's the word I want, within a painting, and I'll, I'll, so that your eye is like always kind of moving around. Like I'm thinking like these these three kind of make a triad, but then they can intertwine like that or these guys. So I think of triads of shapes, triads of colors. Um, tch, tch, tch. And just like keeping your, just keeps your eye moving around. Triads of big colors, like that, that. Um, um, these triad, these cars. And perhaps like this cloud, that cloud, and this little like whiteness down here. So I think of like that kind of, what's the third thing as far as composition? What's the third thing as far as like overall color? And finally, like, what's the third thing as far as idea? Like, um, um, like it's a narrative. It's abstract. It's um, it's about harmonious color. And and then finally, like the really big third thing, which is like, it's about warmth it's about like humanity you know and it's about that that mysterious like crazy third thing that just makes it a work of art that you can't understand so like that's the place I hope to get to but I, I busy myself with the little triads in hopes that I'll reach reach that <laughs> um, so that's kind of what I have to say from this. I don't want to keep you all night, but I really totally appreciate you coming. And I have one more cranky thing to, to show you. Me yes, yes, you can ask me questions. So I noticed the dresses of the women are all the same pattern. But are, do you paint that pattern, all the dresses? No. Like, or is it, is it an applique kind of thing? Uh, yeah, I use fabric. Okay. I use fabric, and I, that came from India. I got like little scraps from India, but a lot of it is. Uh, Julie's clothing that she's gotten rid of, <laughs> or stuff from the thrift store. Uh, yeah, so I'll do that first, and I'll kind of embed that in the, into the picture with acrylics and try to seal it. And then I'll use oil at the end, transparent layers. Any other questions? Yes. Do, do you do sketches for these first, or do they evolve while you're doing the painting? Sometimes I'll do sketches. You know, just like I was saying about like learning from the teenagers. You know, I like to have like uh, some elements that really do involve hand-eye coordination <laughs> and like like actually looking and and really trying to see what's real. So then I'll do like a little sketch, and then I'll work from that. But um, generally, I just, this is the sketch, you know. This was, uh, this one came from an older painting that a friend of mine bought, and I just felt, I was really fond of this one, and I just felt like it fit in, so I made, I actually made another version. <laughs> it's very similar. What's the cracking tape? You know, it's sort of a, it's just like a, what I was saying. It's like, like trying to be, feel free about cracking things open for one thing, but also it's just like, I feel like it's sort of, it's sort of uh, emblematic of 
like the inner, the inner voice and kind of like the spirit being bigger than the body on that level too. But, and then always, you know, like um, when we went to Italy, we'd always see those, the, the green, green halos around heads. And that's, so I've sort of like borrowed that, but, but it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a great way. I mean, it sort of means something. It means something, but it's also a very graphic way to bring out the, the, the face. Um, yes. yeah, I, I like the front of here. Uh, all of them are look, they're on, look like they're on level ground and walking along or pushing things. So one fellow here looks like he's walking up a curb. Oh, right. <laughs> it, should, it should be slippery. It should, it should by all counts, be falling down. <laughs> Well, I like to have that feeling of being, yeah, just like looking at a, looking at a, a scene from all angles at once, I think. <laughs> yes. How many layers do you think you have on a piece like that? Oh. If you've gone over it and washed just, it out and then brought so it. So many, so many. You know, I'll like, I don't know, like eight or something. Yeah. You know, like I'll do, I'll do the ground. And then I'll kind of do it all with acrylic with very simple colors. And then I'll crack it open. And then I'll add white. And then I'll, to make, like, bring out the shapes. And then I'll put transparent paint over that. And then I'll do it again. And go back and forth like that. So, and I, I feel like, you know, my style is just so simple. And um, that um, it's a way to, to reveal the complexity to have that have those layer like each layer is so simple but there's so much conversation between them um, and you know I'm always like accused uh, you know it's always described as whimsical but I'm not really all that whimsical to be honest <laughs> you know I'm like really aware of of you know this being the end times so to speak and and you know like the dark current under things and you know I don't I don't just mean Trump I just mean like in the world <laughs> and um, so like this is kind of my I don't want to just mirror that you know I don't want to be an artist that just mirrors that I want to try to bring something you know try to bring try to bring warmth and humanity but I feel like I mean, to me, I look at these and I feel the undercurrent, but... <laughs> yes? Could you say something about this painting over here? It's the, the only one that has a solitary figure. Yeah, you know, that's funny. It started out as... I was trying to get away from the... single, single character paintings, you know, trying to make it more about community. And that had... That was a river scene that was full of people. And I was thinking about that spot on the West River where everybody swims. And, and then, slowly, all the people disappeared. And, and then it became more about... I had this older painting, which was kind of similar, of, of, that I made when... Of, that was kind of based on that book, Siddhartha, where he sees all the imagery coming down the river. And, and that's kind of it's like, like memories and things coming down the river in that painting. Is it a self-portrait? Uh, I think it's, it's a woman. It's a woman. So. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it's a self-portrait. Yeah, and I've used a lot, I use a lot of collage. Uh, I use like old, old books and uh, fab, yeah, old music, old books, and I try to be respectful, you know, I don't want to just like totally trash my old books, but every once in a while it's like, I can't use a photocopy, it, like it has to be, it's like pure pigment, it has to be the real thing to, to really have that, that aura, <laughs> so, um, I feel like it's sort of like if you're not a vegetarian and you, um, um, it's, I think it's all right to not be a vegetarian, but you should just be really conscious of that it's, it was a living thing. So I try to be respectful of the old books. 
Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, most of your pictures are taken in the summertime. I just wonder, do you have a preference for the summertime? Oh, definitely, definitely. We live like on this cold till. It's just like so, so brutal. <laughs> I just remember, like I never learned to ski when I was little, and then I remember learning to ski when we were, when I was way too old, and going skiing with these little kids who were like whoosh, zipping down, and I'm like, like falling over, and, and uh, I just don't, I don't appreciate it that much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, with this painting here, what color did you start out with as your under painting? <clears throat> I pretty much started out I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, 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 I pretty much start out with this ochre, like an earth, the very basic earth colors. You know, something that can go either direction. And, and that often ends up being like the faces of the people. That's usually the place where I started. And then, you know, when you look at the sky, it looks very, very textured. Mm -hmm. Is that just like a, do you use like some kind, something like a gloss medium or, um, is it, is it like, it, it looks textured like, almost like there's some sand or something in there. Yeah, it's like, like debris from my studio floor, you mean? <laughs> it's like, I, I really like Liquin. Are you a painter? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like Liquin a lot, but this, they didn't have any at Zephyr's, so I got some Galkid. Mm -hmm. And it's like very, uh, it's, it's kind of like shinier and stuff. I kind of like it. I, I might use that again. Um, but, you know, I, I, people accuse me of being indirect, and, and I feel like that's my whole approach for painting, is to be indirect. Like, I never feel satisfied when I draw a line, like, I'll draw a person, but a line. It's always, I'm always, like, making a mark and then cutting away at it, like, carving it out, as opposed to drawing it. Not so much with my illustrations, but with my paintings. I'm like, have the earth tone and then I'll like carve out the shape on the outside, like drawing the negative space. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Petey? It's so neat because there's such serious play going on here. Um, and I'm so uplifted. I have such a myriad of, of emotions when I'm, when I'm around your work that is um, a story that it keeps on, the real keeps on running within myself. And I really enjoy that when I'm with your work, even when I'm not, when I remember it. Um, is this mostly improvisational? So are yeah. you just mark making and then you're just playing with shapes as you're going or is there a story that kind of creeps in too or? I guess it's, yeah, it's a lot of improv, you know, I'll have that basic, the basic theme, you know, like the architecture of it, you know, it's like I'm building a little mannequin architecture, and then on top of that, it's all improvisation, basically, yeah, and so the lines, you know, when I'm making these crazy lines, I am, I'm trying to just not worry about disrupting the picture. But sometimes I'm kind of thinking about like connecting some characters once in a while. <laughs> yeah. These people here look almost like they have halos. Is that your intent? Yeah, it's, it's kind of my, you know, it's, it kind of goes back and forth between being a way of fracturing the painting up and a way of feeling that feeling of just being bigger than your body, like being, like, I don't know if that's a normal thing, but just <laughs> feeling like you're walking down the street and you're like, kind of like bigger than your body, like floating down the street. I don't know. It just happens to me. <laughs> Any others? Yes. Could you speak to the pictures on the back walls here? That oh, sh sure. Yeah, those, those are from uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Julie's brother is, is a, a children's entertainer and you know really great musician and I've been playing playing music with him for like 20 years like a really long time and um, it, he put together this songbook we collaborated on it and I did about 
it was crazy. I did about 70 illustrations or more. And so I got to the point where um, I really kind of distilled my style. And I'm quite pleased with it. It's a nice little book. Um, just come out. House party. So it's full of, you know, folk songs and plus songs that Dan wrote. How long so, has it been out? It's just out like today. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's, yeah, it's just out for Christmas. Uh, like Quarto Books, Dan Zane's House Party. So, uh, so, um, uh, it, you know, they're tied to my, they're definitely influenced back and forth between my paintings and my illustrations, but I'm, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about little kids and, you know, just trying to give them that really pure, like, entertainment and good vibe. You know, it's been really helpful actually teaching little kids to, because my, our kids are all grown up, so it's, it's helpful to be hanging out with them again in the elementary school. Do you ever teach adults? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I have, I'm gonna do like a children's book uh, class at the Putney School in the summertime uh, for adults, yeah. Week long in August. So I have done that, yeah. The kids at Putney are like our adults. They really are, they're really, they're great. So, any other questions? No? No questions, Julie? <laughs> and I'm, I'm really glad my brother, my older brother David is here. Um, he came all the way up from Connecticut. And he is really a big influence for just getting everybody in our family drawing and painting from the start. We used to go in our cellar and uh, make comic books and we'd have our own heroes and you know, our own characters and we would, we would really produce them. We'd have like 20 issues of this one, some character, you know. And uh, it, it was like um, very intense actually, our, our <laughs> sessions. We would, we would make comic books and listen to records like all afternoon. And, and I've kind of reproduced that with my class at the Putney School where we uh, listen to records and make comics. But I just remembered my good friend Matthew has to go to a concert tonight and he's going to help us with our last song. And we made this cranky. The other thing I want to say is that um, I made this cranky for, this, for our, the Cranky Fest next weekend at the Sandglass Theater. It's going to be a whole bunch of us performing. And this song is kind of based on um, a melody from St. Matthew's Passion, which I listen to almost exclusively by Bach, and I've um, listened to almost exclusively last winter, just over and over again. But can we dim the lights? Is that possible, or would that mess up the the? Okay, Andy. Okay.